Hi everyone, welcome to our channel, Lightworkers Secret to Success. We are so excited. We're here with Adam, Pamela, Amanda, me, and our special guest today, Candice Divinatrix. And we're just so excited to have her here today. She is a Tantra teacher. And so she's gonna be teaching us a little bit about Tantra. We're gonna be asking her some questions. So we're just really excited for you to get to know her. And um, yeah, so let's just get started. Candice, you wanna just introduce yourself and tell our viewers what you do and, and, and share a little bit about yourself, please? Yeah, yeah. So uh, what I do would take me the entire show. Uh, when I hear someone introduce me and use Divinatrix, um, you know, the best way to describe what I do um, whether I am working with someone one-on-one -on -one with body work or coaching or energy work or virtually, I am channeling the divine. Um, and really, there's the word dominatrix. And to that, that's like taking your power, right? And for me, I'm calling on the power of the divine and I want to help others evoke their own power, their own divinatrix or divinator or whatever that means to you. Um, yeah, and so there are many pathways to that. Tantra for me is the pathway that includes all pathways. It is the most open, inviting, inclusive, um, conscious spiritual pathway I found that also includes every element of our human experience. And for me, and what I've learned is having practices, um, fine-tuned, creative, divinated, intuited um, practices to do with yourself, with the divine, and those you choose to relate to familially or romantically can just wake up the light and the divine. And whether you believe in God or things that are unseen in this world. Um, and on that note, um, I am blind. I'm technically been going blind my entire life, but very slowly. And um, a couple of years ago, lost a lot. So I feel like I'm brand new baby blind, um, which also gives me a very attuned eye to everything going on in the unseen world. Um, and when you asked me the question of, you know, um, some of your questions in advance, Colette, um, one of the things that came up for me was how much I am looking to really um, open my third eye and this experience of going blind as a gift for humanity and for those I serve. So, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that introduction. And one of the things I love about you is you just make everything so fun and light and happy, even things that are very serious, you know, because I know you've used Tantra a lot for your own healing. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Like the, like how you first got started with Tantra and in your background, just a little bit, you know, just letting us know, because, you know, it's, we, you know, you take things, even going blind, you know, something that might just totally devastate someone and you you see the the about the purpose behind it you know opening your third eye and helping humanity with it so i just i love that about you so if you want, want to talk just a little bit about your background and how you got started in tantra Ooh, yeah so <laughs> i have an extensive history of trauma and wounding and violence i was born into a very dark, dark, dark life. <laughs> um, and as a child, I learned to make light of really dark stuff. I learned to escape in fantasy and wonder. And I feel like I have always had that. And um, 
But there came a time in my life where that escape, um, what served me as a child, turned into disassociation, turned into taking me out of my body. And um, so I'm not even experiencing the gifts and the joys of life. Um, and so when I was 21 and I changed my life, I got off drugs and alcohol and I entered into the world of healing and trying to change through the very traditional governmental societally acceptable model, going to rehab, going to AA, going to um, different like peer support recovery groups and stuff like that. Um, and I got a lot of healing and, you know, that stuff really saved my life. But um, I left that world about eight years ago, right around when I found Tantra. I didn't know it was Tantra that I found. Um, but there are so many components of our healing, especially around sexuality. Um, that I definitely was not finding in these regular models. And my last job, um, I worked at a transitional living facility for women. And um, I remember I got in trouble for, on my day off, taking uh, clients to a Buddhist temple. They didn't feel comfortable going on their own. And it was on Sundays and that happened to me my day off. And um, like little trivial stuff like that, you know, we weren't really allowed to serve people and um, around spirituality and sexuality. Those two pieces, there's just, it's too big, it's too much, it's too triggering, you know, so we just don't go there, right? Um, so I left that world and um, initially, I found Tantra on my own, really. Um, I was just trying to find my own healing. I had so much wounding. Um, I was a Reiki practitioner. And in my head, I was like, well, if I could take Reiki and apply that to my sexual wounding and mix that with some meditation, wow that could be really cool. And I'm gonna do that for other people. And so that's what I started doing. And it was actually a client that um, was like, have you ever heard of Tantra? And I was like, nope, no clue. <laughs> and, um, and then I went and sought training and everything that they were teaching, it was like, I was already doing. Um, I feel like Tantra is our natural way of being. Um, just, it, We've gotten so far from our innate primal essence, from our roots, from connecting to our sexuality as a life form, as a connection to God's source, as a source of magic and creation, um, as well as the fact that... Um, there's not a lot of areas where we can find healing with sexuality and spirituality. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of, you know, around six to eight years ago is where I found Tantra. It was really like this inner journey. Um, and yeah, Tantra, you know, we use this, I use this word and I stopped using it for a while because it's so misconstrued and it's seen as out there. You know, it's this thing that only certain people do and it only happens in one part of our body and it only happens for a moment in time, like sex, which is just not true. Um, yeah, it's a big topic. <laughs> I love it. You, you really, you know, gave us a, a great overview and um, I have so many questions, but I just want to check in 
with um, my friends here and see if anyone has any questions that came up so far. Well, nothing's come up for me so far, but I like I am very interested in in all of this. So I'm just I'm curious to know more about Tantra and and you know how to use it and just yeah, I'm sure you're probably going to explain all of this, but I just that's what I'm most interested in. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and it's, you know, if nobody else has anything, um, uh, you know, I, I'm imagining most of you are familiar, you know, uh, with we're on a light workers kind of collaboration here with energy and uh, our chakra system. Um, Tantra gives us tools and practices and ideology ideologies <laughs> um, to create a relationship with these energies um, that we can do more with it. Um, Tantra ignites our inner magician. Um, and I feel like it's a way of being for me, you know, but it can also be just something you do, you know, every once in a while you drop in and do a Tantra practice. So it's really just like spirituality. There's so much choice, you know, and that's why, you know, when clients come to me, I have um, four different tiers of offerings and I have a lot of reading they have to do before I can even get into a conversation with them because there's a lot of clarity one needs to come to on their own for me to really tell you what Tantra can do for you or what it means for you or to you because it is really a personalized, individualized journey. Yes, I can give you practices um, and, you know, say what Tantra does for me and what I've seen it do for so many clients. Um, and if you guys would like, I could guide us through a little practice. Sure. Yeah, I'm really excited. I want to wait just a few months. I have a few questions for you first because I want to save that for kind of towards the end, but yeah, I'm really excited for your guided practice for us. Um, but just, you know, it's interesting because as you were talking, what was coming up for me is um, I've heard that addictions are often caused by loneliness with feeling disconnected with, um, yeah. And so people turn to things outside of them, drugs, alcohol, to kind of forget the pain that their body is feeling. So on uh, one hand is like, they don't want to even feel what's inside of them, like, like all the trauma and the pain that's happened. And then the other part of it is they don't want to talk about it. You know, they don't want to share it. So then they feel disconnected from other people, or maybe they did try to tell someone and then people shut them out down or didn't believe them. So then they turn to the drugs and alcohol to cover all of that pain. So I'm just curious how Tantra helps with all of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me, before I picked up the drugs and alcohol, I actually had a plan to, because it was all around me. Um, but I, I used to cut um, to get myself out of my body. The, like, the pain, physical pain, that was fine. I could handle that. The emotions the just the stuff inside kind of bear tantra creates internal safety for me that's actually you know right now with going blind um as someone who has had a lot of trauma and can be i'm hyper vigilant and hyper aware very sensitive that's what i had to do as a child to survive um, and yes, yeah, maybe this great empathic person, but um, so Tantra for me helps me come back into my own body, helps me 
know what's going on inside. Um, right now with going blind, it's like, and someone dealing with trauma, someone who has turned to addiction, uh, someone who has turned, well, see the word addiction, I get, I, 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 um, I used to use that word a lot and I stopped using it. Um, because I had a lot of judgment towards myself around it. And I know that a lot of other people do. And I feel like it's very human for us to want to leave our body, um, considering the circumstances, <laughs> you know, like it made sense for me. Um, so I feel like people that are craving to leave their body and are engaging in activities that take them out of their body whether that to be um, substances or sex or porn or overworking, over serving, caretaking versus caregiving. Tantra has given me this language. Tantra has given me an understanding of myself to be able to feel safer in this world and in my body, to feel okay just being and to feel the darkness when the trauma comes up, when the stuff comes up. I have tools, I have practices and I'm doing them on a regular basis so that when that stuff does come up, I am already kind of down here so I don't have to you know like I was saying with going blind it's like the volume knob on life just got turned up I'm like a giant healing machine which can be awesome but without these practices it's like I'm constantly vibrating <laughs> um yeah I love that. Thank you so much um, for those answers. Does anyone else have any questions that came up so far? Pamela or Amanda? I just love the topic and I've been um, I've been doing like tantric searches on YouTube for a while. And, and I think one of the things people misunderstand that they think it's all sexual, it's more sensual. It's just more the giving and receiving of someone else's energy. And I think um, at because I have a mentor that um, she started doing Tantra, like dancing, I guess is what it's called. Um, and her mentor, you know, she was going through a tough time and she went through that. And so I was like, oh, I want to try that. So I started like Googling, what is it? And what is that all about? And I'm not a dancer, but if I can feel more sensual in my body and um, not just being like sexual, but just feeling good within my own body, right? I think they get those two things mixed up a little bit. Um, and, and, uh, and, and just for my own healing. And that's why I started kind of, you know, researching it a little bit. And, uh, so when Colette said, we're having you come on, I was so excited to learn more. So just thank you again for being here. Just love this. Thank you. Um, so yeah, um, as part of our Lightworkers secret to success interviews, we like to ask people, you know, what is your vision? Um, for 2021, what, what would you like to see created in the world? Mm. That's a really big question. Initially, when I thought about it, I have my personal vision, and there's the world vision. But mm. it's kind of a, it's a follow up also to to what um, I am sorry, what was your name that just shared? Sorry, it was Amanda. Amanda, Amanda. So I desire for the world to have that felt sense of... <laughs> so for me, what I like to say is the Tantra is going beyond the limitations of our genitals. And, you know, that's the misconstru, constru, uh, that's the misunderstanding. Um, yes, there are Tantra practices 
um, that like I can teach you tantra practices that involve the genitals, but they don't have to. And so my vision and my desire and then all I do it's to inspire others to feel and create the sensation of being giant genitals, of living in the giant orgasm, of going beyond moments in time and the restoration of the innocence, the purity, in the divinity of our sexuality. Because yes, Tantra is about sexuality, but it's not just about our genitals. It's going back to respecting, revering that part of us, that part of our body, that part of life as our God force creation. That is, our power, like we are that powerful, we create life. And we could tap into that same power for so many other things instead of just in the bedroom for a moment in time. And so that's, yeah. So Candace, as you're talking about healing, I'm, you know, I've been doing a lot of uh, things, uh, healing for the collective, like children's, you know, for the children and for our ancestors who have already passed away. So can you use Tantra in that way as well? With children? Well, I mean, um, so like uh, kids that were abused, like can you use Tantra as like um, healing the collective? Yes. And there, well, Tantra, uh, you know, there's definitely... Yeah, finding the practices, like if you're talking about, um, in, you talk about engaging with others. Just if you're, well, that, or even by yourself. I mean, cause sometimes you have, um, you know, some people like will pray for other people or they'll like, we, uh, we do like energy healing for the collective. I mean, I think we're all empaths here. So I just didn't know if you could use that modality as a way to um, help heal children and they don't really have to participate, but you're doing it on an energetic level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, just like any other energy work, you know, or any other meditation practices, you know, you can send the energy wherever you want um, with that specific, you know, if you came to me and you know, you said you really wanted to, you wanted some rituals or practices. I would give you specific rituals or practices that can serve that. And you know, depending on, you know, you don't have to involve your your self pleasure or your genitals or relating with someone. But from a tantric perspective, if you were to go into self-pleasure with the intention in the meditation, say you are holding a vision for these children, maybe even have stuffed animals of them around. I mean, I would, there's so many ways in which that you can do this. Um, and God, there are things that you can um, have the children do that have absolutely nothing to do with our genitals. Tantra can be entirely PG-13, um, and it really can be used in anything, really. What does that mean exactly? The word Tantra? Well, no, um, like not with the genitals, but in other ways, like you said, PG-13, what does that mean? Oh, so, you know, there's a Tantra for adults, you know, then there's, there'll be Tantra for children. Um, yeah, like if, it, if, if someone was to do a practice or like, yeah, if I have a show or I'm doing something for children or with children, then I would definitely create it in a way 
that they would still understand and be able to receive and enjoy. Um, children are naturally tongue. Like they are, they're tapped in. They, you know, they don't even need us. Um, and I think that's one of the components um, for us. Like we're the ones that need that assistance to come back to that wonder. <laughs> And also, isn't Tantra part of it also setting boundaries, you know, telling people like, this is what I'm okay with, and this is what I'm not okay with, and, you know, speaking what you desire. I mean, there's like a lot of parts to it, right? Like different practices. You know, some people would say that conscious communication or nonviolent communication. Um, I mean, for me, it, it would go into my Tantra practice. Um, I have related, I've met people that call themselves tantric, that do not have good boundaries and communication skills, but they know how to guide me through, you know, a ritual, they're really spiritual. So that's, everyone's so different. When I work with someone, we will be talking about boundaries and communication and getting really clear on authentic yeses and nos. I think that's the big thing. And um, intentionality. So um, when I first started doing this work, um, I would never, a lot of people that do my work also share of themselves and their body in ways that I just couldn't, I, I couldn't find my yes to. Um, but that is Tantra to them. And for me, over time, as I built my inner safety, um, I was able to for, like get clear and there are ways in which that I can share of myself personally and professionally um, that really can't be defined by a piece of paper. The only way they can be created and defined is with intentionality and communication. Um, you can, so all four of us can do the same Tantra practice with an entirely different intention and have an entirely different result. Um, how I may, you know, my Tantra, my Tantra flow may not be yours. Um, so is life as a spirituality. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, so I, I'm excited to get into your, um, you know, your thing that you're going to share with us. Um, does anyone have any other questions? What does, what does Tantra flow mean exactly? These are all words. This is just me talking. But the word Tantra, I do I say in Sanskrit, it can be translated to weave. And so the practices and everything that we're doing, it's the intentionality is designed to weave together our chakra system. So everything is flowing and working together to weave together, like right now, us, we are weaving, we are flowing together. When I choose to engage in intimate relationship with someone, I am choosing to weave myself with them to one degree or another. Maybe my heart, maybe my sex, maybe not my sex, maybe just my heart, but there's still a weaving. Yeah. And I'd say that's kind of like flow too. So just so for clarity, so I understand what you're saying. When two people are together, just their, how they're interacting with each other, their energies are interacting with each other. That's what you mean by flow? Yeah, well, flow could be me dancing, me moving, 
flow, you know, there's actually a science of flow arts right now. There's this whole thing around flow as a, it's a, a mindset. It's, it's like the place you want to go, you know, we seek to get to in meditation, you know, the place you seek to go to as a Reiki practitioner before you, you know, you're dropping into the flow, the stream. And sometimes you're doing that with another person. Sometimes it's to give, sometimes it's to receive, sometimes it's to weave. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I love that definition. And, and thank you for, um, you know, just explaining everything so well and how it can really help people with like trauma and the energy and connecting with people. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm, does anyone else have any questions? Okay, well then I'm excited. Oh, Pamela? Not really a question, just more of a comment. Um, my heart and I used to do a lot of camping with a group that's called the Council of, America of Magical Arts or CMA. And they actually um, have a temple of the sacred harlot there. And so they do a lot of this um, healing with the tantra so i'm familiar with the practice and stuff um and it just it was always fascinating to me because there was that misconception right like you talked about before and how much it was so a lot of times we worked security for this so to make sure we didn't have any minors coming up because it was such a release for people and there'd be just this soul wrenching um, from the traumas that they had experienced in the past and it's such a healing for them. So I really um, think that what you're doing is just amazing. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Pamela. Okay, so Candace, if you can lead us in your activity, your exercise that you prepared for us, I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So um, get as comfortable as you can. And if you can close your eyes, awesome. If you can't close your eyes, just try to bring your um, uh, attention and awareness as much as possible to these points of contact. And you can even use your hands if you have to have your eyes open. Uh, <sighs> Taking a breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Filling up your belly on the inhale. Really letting your belly get really full. And slowly feel the air just filling up your chest, rising in your shoulders. And even take a moment to pause at the top of your inhale and hold the breath in, feel yourself full. Exhale, shoulders going down, belly going down, a slow release. And this next one, I'm going to join you. Really let that jaw fall. Let out some sound on the exhale. Um. On your exhale, start to feel your sits bones or your feet on the floor, however you're sitting. Feel your connection to the earth. And bring your awareness and attention and that connection up into your pelvic floor, your sits bones, your roots. Breathing that energy from beautiful Mother Earth. 
up and through your body, feeling yourself drinking from the cup, filling up. Exhale and see your energy is going back down into the earth, creating this internal sense, weaving your energy with the earth energy. From the eternal abundance, ever-present divine waters. And you're really not doing anything but breathing and feeling. Noticing. Allowing yourself to receive. Notice right above your roots sits your sex center, the point of which we've all came from. Breathe now into your sex center. Bring all your attention and awareness right there. And just notice what thoughts and feelings and sensations come up and breathe. We're just being with. Now allow Namagaya, divine feminine energy to flow up through your roots and into your sex center, creating an internal sexual union between you and the earth. You and the mother of all mothers, your earth mother beyond your birth mother. place of which we've all came from. Notice what it feels like to be with your sex center and divine mother. <sighs> Movements. Wiggling helps create more flow, helps the energy move. Mm. Now breathe this sacred sexual union between you and Mother Earth up into the rest of your body. Feel the love, feel the pleasure. Feel that connectedness. And if you don't, it's okay, just notice. And breathe. Maybe this is a chance for you to allow yourself to be held. And anything that comes out around your relationship to sex or your mother or divinity and spirit and sex. And now with this connectedness to earth, to our sex, I invite you to come up to your crown. 
Inviting in divine father, masculine, father sky energy. The dimensions above into your being. Breathing in through your crown and let it rain down through your entire chakra system. And yes, letting this energy, this masculine energy connect to your sex center. Letting that source of which that you came from, that we all came from, connect to the masculine, the above dimensions, the sky, Noticing, feeling, being, connecting, no right, no wrong. Uh, and you may feel energy not moving. Sometimes this little bit of movement and shaking out, sounding. Bringing your attention and awareness into your heart center. Taking a few breaths right there. Get some sound. Maybe ah. bringing your hands to your heart. your love cup, your center of being, the center of your chakras. And invite, envision your breath and all this energy you just built up inside you. All this energy from above and below now coming into your heart. Feeling your heart held by the eternal mother, father, eternal beloved. Bringing the sexual energy the root energy, the sky energy, all into your heart. Vision, pleasure, joy, life, God, sacred sexual union happening right now inside your body. With each breath, you expand the pleasure. With each breath or each little movement or sound, you open up the pathways, your pleasure, to your internal felt sense of divinity, of being held loved, fed, nourished by all at all times. Allowing your pleasure to be yours. Allowing sexuality to take new sacred form inside your heart. creating new waves of pleasure in your body and in every area of your life. With each breath, with each touch, with each moment. Mm, and just 
Take three more breaths with me. And we'll close this practice. Envision almost as if your body, see it as like this witch's brew. <laughs> and we're all witches calling in all that you desire for yourself and all that you serve. Give it a little wiggle, give it a little shake, calling it in for you, your families, your clients. And the days to come. Mm. And another breath and opening your eyes after close and just kind of gently taking notice of the room around you of sensations in your body. Just witness for a moment. Mm. When anyone's ready to share. I don't know how much time I had, so I hope I did good with timing. <laughs> yeah, that was beautiful. Um, for me, it was like so much energy as mm -hmm. you were speaking, like just so much energy in my chakras. And it was almost like it was blocked in my heart. Mm -hmm. So like as it was flowing up through me and like up through my chakras it was like it got trapped in my chest and it was almost like stuck there and so I was moving through that and like tears were coming and then calling in the father and like the, the divine union all of that energy flowing and I it opened up more um and I, I like I really had to move through it because it really did feel like so stuck um so that was my experience. It was just really um, just beautiful. All of the energy and the, and the, the weaving, it was cool. Cause it like really brought together everything you were talking about of like the weaving of the energies and the flowing and the balancing. So yeah, that was my experience. I would love to hear from the rest of the group. Oh, goodness. Um, it was very relaxing to me. I just felt the energy flowing just really freely, very smoothly, and it was just very relaxing. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Candice. That was uh, good. Uh, definitely, um, I could feel my kundalini energy just sort of going up and down my spine. And uh, and then I felt different sensations like in my chest, in the top of my head, in my crown chakra. Um, I could just really feel a lot. And during the middle of it, my cat came and uh, jumped on my lap as well. So I think she was feeling that energy as well. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, like Amanda, it was just really relax relaxing and just feel the energy and stuff. So yes, thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Candice. And I just feel like during all of, you know, for some people, it's a very fearful time. It's a very tumultuous time. It's a very overwhelming time. And I feel like these practices really um, bring us back to our body, bring us back to the pleasure of life and the joy of life and, and the sensations. Our bodies are so juicy and yummy when we feel into them and and so many times we're so caught up with what's going on outside of us and the media and, and our friends and people telling us this, that, and the other. And, and so this practice of just getting back to ourselves and our pleasure in our body, I think it's so important. So thank you for sharing all of that with us. And um, how can people find you if they want to work with you? Um, so, yes, thank you. My um, website is, or... Anywhere, really, I'm kind of a social 
practice social media sluttery as much as possible for you guys. <laughs> um, so Temple of Frolic. If you look up Temple of Frolic, um, that's my website. It's, um, I have different shows and events I do on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, this was so awesome. And, you know, I... It's, it's vulnerable. It's, you know, the, the journey that we just went on um, can bring up a lot of stuff. So I really, mm, I'm honored, you know, and I, that you all trusted me to take you there. And, um, you know, I definitely want to say be gentle <laughs> with yourself the rest of the day or evening, whatever it is for you, as um, that's one of the things about these practices, like it will impact your life. Um, I've had clients, you know, I've had many people that tell me that just one time meeting me one session, their life was never the same again. Um, cause this is what we're learning to work with is our life and our life energy. And so thank you for letting me play with your life and, um, please do, you know, reach out if you're looking for any other extra guidance or support. I do have right now, I haven't been producing as many, um, guided videos, um, having technical difficulties, but I have the, I have two shows on Facebook, which you could find. And I have um, some guided practices and demo videos that you can find on my YouTube that I've done. So if you go to my Temple of Frolic YouTube, I have many different videos there where you can learn all about Tantra. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, thanks again so much for being here with us today. I'm just so grateful for your time and for sharing your gifts with us and then, you know, your gifts with the planet as well. So, mm -hmm. um, yay. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much, Candice. Yeah. Thank you. It's a pleasure.